this is Janet Diane Morius Wardlow. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Janet Expansions.com. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the plaque that I got for a Christmas gift from a lovely friend. It's Janet's Bella Cucina. And as some of you know, my heritage comes from the mountains of Italy, although I am not Italian. But because that particular area of Italy sometimes belonged to France and sometimes belonged to Italy and sometimes was its own country, that my great grandfather actually emigrated under the banner of Italy. So that's why. And I am studying Italian. So all of that kind of comes together, which is fun, and I really appreciate the plaque. It's really fun to have it in my kitchen. I also want to show you Stuart's refrigerator magnet collection. Now, as you know, he only travels with carry-on, which means when the family travels with him, we only travel with carry-on. So we really don't have room for a lot of souvenirs, but wherever we go, wherever he goes, he gets a magnet. So you can see of all the various places that he's been, I'll show you some of my favorite. Here's Paris, a wonderful time when we were in France, and Cyprus was actually wonderful as well. And Estonia had an interesting interesting features to it. I guess that's the best way to say. What else might you enjoy looking at? Oh, here's one of my favorite places, although it's heavy ritual area, is Yellowstone. We've been to Yellowstone in Wyoming, and I've been there many times, of course, under a variety of circumstances. And Devil's Tower National Monument in South Dakota, I believe, or North Dakota. I can't remember which one. But we went through um, this area. There was... Um, well, they have it once a year. They have a motorcycle rally where they have like 300,000 motorcycles on the road. And that's what we went through when we saw Devil's Towers. So lots of interesting things on this side. I uh, haven't quite got it. Here's Istanbul in Turkey. Here's Shanghai. We have the Leaning Tower of Pisa where we've been. All kinds of places. So lots of fun things on our refrigerator. And I have to be very careful not to knock them off. Otherwise I get in big trouble. So on over here to my cooking area. I hope you remember or you viewed the podcast that I did on millet because millet is a complete protein. It's very light. It's very fluffy. It's an excellent replacement for rice and I use that probably more than any other replacement grain next to wild rice which I haven't shown you yet but one of these days I will. But today I want to show you quinoa. Now a lot of people hear about quinoa and to me it's a very it's a very good grain and also has a lot of protein in it. This happens to be um, the, the white, I call it white variety. It's very fine, it's much finer than millet and it is very fine when it cooks up and not everybody likes it because it's too light for them. <clears throat> it's a little light for me but I just wanted to show you how this differs from the millet we did the other day. So I'm going to put this in my pan. Uh, one cup of quinoa and two cups, or I'm sorry, a cup and a half of water, which I've already started it boiling a little bit because I'd like to have it finished by the time we're done here so you can see what it looks like. So we just put that in there. I'm going to turn this on high and get it boiling. And then when it's done, you can see the difference between this and the millet that we did the other day. Now it's also more expensive. Uh, what I usually buy is in bulk. And when I get it in bulk, this last that I paid for was five and a half a pound. And I've finished this one up. But you can also get it. Arrowhead Mills has organic quinoa. And I didn't leave the price on this one, so I can't tell you the price of this. But just to show you some different things, this is black quinoa. It's also organic. It comes from the Andes. And it's $8.30 a pound. So it's a lot more expensive than the millet, which usually runs around a dollar and a half a pound. And here's some red quinoa. But you know, for things that are different, or if you want to mix the three together, you have the white, the red, and the black. Just, you know, it's fun to try different things just to see what you like and what you think. So I'm just going to bring this to a boil, and it shouldn't take too long. I think probably about, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes tops. It's really just going to soak up the water. But, you know, for something different, it's nice. And if you're just one person, again, you can freeze part of it. You can use it as rice. You can use it as a cereal in the morning. You can do almond milk. You can do coconut milk. You can do goat milk. You know, whatever you like. Or some people just eat it as is with maybe a little fruit mixed in. Depends on what your preference is. So I'm going to let that cook. And I'm going to move you on down here. Deeper into my kitchen space. Set this aside. 
and today I'm going to show you how to make a dill sauce, which I use for a variety of things. And a lot of people say, what do you keep in your pantry? You know, well, my, I showed you ghost sauce not too long ago that I use in a variety of things. And I generally like to have that in my refrigerator. I also like to have the dill sauce in because I use this on fish. If you broil fish, you can actually layer it on top of the fish. You can use it as a dip for your fish. Um, you can put it on potatoes. That's probably one of my favorite ways to do it. If you've done twice baked potatoes where you bake them and you take the the insides out, you can mix the dill sauce in with that and then put it back in your potato shell and bake it again. So there's lots of different things that you can do. You can mix it in tuna fish, you can put it in uh, egg salad, a lot of things. Is, again, it's your imagination, but I'm going to show you how to put it together. It's very easy to do. I make a large batch. It will keep in your refrigerator for probably as long as you possibly could take to eat it until you get tired of it. So this is I begin with my base, which is the Hain Safflower Mayonnaise, which is cold pressed, and I just put in a whole jar. This one happens to be 24 ounces. So I start with that. I've already gone ahead and chopped up my onion, and it was a little pungent, and I, it's very, it's not tiny, tiny, but it's diced. And I put it in some water to soak because it was strong, and I want to take it, some of that strength out so it's not quite so strong when you, um, in the sauce. It's not overpowering, it makes you cry, it made me cry, and usually there's not a lot of onions that will make that happen, because I'm used to doing onions. Then, I have some of Cindy's pickles that I chopped up this morning, I diced those, I'm going to put that in, and if you get, um, I use Bubbies if you don't have access to somebody who makes your own pickles or you don't do it yourself, I use Bubbies, I like that brand, and I take the sauce or the juice that's in there because it also has a dill pickle flavor and I just pour some in. So for what I have here, maybe a third to a half of a cup. It's up to you. And I will eventually use the spices that are in the bottom of this. And I have also organic dill fresh that I bought in my supermarket. I put mine, of course, in my hydrogen peroxide soaking bath. And then I just take my kitchen shears and cut it up into my sauce. You can also do it with a knife. If you have shears, be sure you keep your fingers out of the way. And of course in the summertime, if you can get it fresh or get it your, fresh at your supermarket, anyway, that's great. I like to add that in there. You can also do dill seed. You can do dried dill. Use your imagination. Okay. I also put in chopped garlic, which you can cook and do yourself, but if not, here's some organic chopped garlic that I have in a jar. I don't want to take the time to do it myself. And I probably put in a tablespoon or two. I like a lot of garlic, as I'm sure all of you know by now. We eat a lot of garlic, a lot of onion. I also have garlic powder. This is Frontier Organic. I'm going to put a little bit of the, I'm sorry, this is the onion powder. I also have the garlic powder. I'm going to put that in there as well. So, probably a teaspoon or two, along with the chopped garlic. Now, you can eat this right away when you're done, but as you know, that a lot of times after things sit for a few hours, the flavors kind of meld together a little bit more. The other thing with the powder is it absorbs some of the, um, the juice that I have put in there, so it helps hold the flavor. I've also put dried parsley in it before, dried cilantro in it before. This is my garlic powder, and this again will help absorb some of the juice that I put in of the, from the, my pickles, so it's not so runny, depending upon how you like it. Let me check my quinoa here, it's starting to boil up. Turn the heat down. And you can see it swells up pretty fast. It doesn't take very long. But it's coming. Down. You don't want it to burn at the bottom of the pan, just hot enough to absorb all your water. Alright, here we go. So, and also it's noisy. <laughs> Put it on low. And maybe I'll just move it off. Let it sit for a minute. This is organic yellow mustard. I also put in my dill sauce. 
And again, it depends on what you like. I'm probably put in maybe about three or four tablespoons, a quarter to a third of a cup, somewhere in there. Depends on what color you like it. I put in sea salt. And my sea salt is very strong, so probably around a half a teaspoon. Let it absorb in there. Black pepper. So again, maybe about a half a teaspoon. I like things spicy. If you don't like it as spicy, don't use so much. My red pepper flakes that I get from Cindy. A nice handful of those. And again, you can mix and match. If you don't like things spicy, leave things like this out. But I happen to like it in there. And if you have some hot sauce, this is just some habanero. And I put in just a few drops. It'll give it a little bit of a kick. And I think that's everything. And then we just mix it up together. It makes a really nice sauce. It will sit. The dry things will absorb some of the liquid. And it will get a little bit more... Um, dense. And I just put it right back in the jar. That's how I store it. Of course it's a little bit more than one jar so I'll put it in a Tupperware or a glass bowl, a glass jar. But it's really pretty easy to do and this is one of the basic sauces that I keep in my refrigerator. If we run out of dill sauce people are saying, Mom, where's the dill sauce? So I'm just going to share that with you. It's great. I know New Year's is coming up. You might want to have some really nice things for your party. If you're sharing uh, fish of any kind, this is great. And I will remind you that if you need a low-carb uh, um, seafood sauce, a red, what I call my red sauce, I take my sheep's milk yogurt, or you can take any kind of yogurt. I line my strainer with cheesecloth. I put that in and I let it strain, which makes it a little heavier. And once it's heavy, I put in a tablespoon or two of horseradish, a tablespoon or two of organic ketchup, no corn syrup. Be sure you check your ingredients. Stir that together and you have a wonderful seafood sauce for shrimp. Again, you can put that on any kind of fish. Um, I don't know what all you use your seafood sauce for, but that's basically what we use ours for. It's just seafood, but use your imagination. So I want to to remind you of that as well if you're thinking uh, you want something a little different and nutritious to go along with your seafood or your holiday planning. The last thing I want to show you, let me check my millet here one more time. So I think it's about, I think it needs a little bit more water. I'm going to put in about another half a cup. So remember, this was a cup and a half. You can add water, you cannot take it out. So. It depends on where you get your millets, like everything else. I'm going to put this back on for just a little bit because I want it to be a little softer. There's too many shells that are, are showing. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. <clears throat> and this time I made my garbanzo beans from scratch. Usually you see me open up a can and throw them in. And I did things a little bit differently this time. I have a, actually a huge bag of beans that I soaked overnight. They will double in size, so be sure you have a large container. And after soaking overnight, I have been boiling these for somewhere between an hour to 90 minutes to make them nice and soft because I want to show you how to make hummus. It's very simple to do, and again, it's a good holiday dip. It's nutritious. It's easy to make. If you don't want to take the time to do your beans, at least get organic like I do in a can and throw it. will take a couple of cans. And you can save the liquid because I will use some of the liquid to get this to the consistency that I want. So keep that in mind as you are um, doing your holiday shopping. I obviously have more here than what I'm going to use in my hummus this morning. But I'm going to have extra because we also like that as a side dish with some spices. You can do a little, and you can do this for your parties too. You can do um, a little oil with sea salt and pepper. You, again, you can put in a little cilantro. You can put in onion. You can put in some red pepper. You know, use your imagination and think what would go good with this, and just start putting in a few things. If you're not sure, do a little on the side. So if you're going to serve it to people, at least you're going to like it, and there'll be something there for you to eat at your party. So. 
you move some of these things out of my way and we will get on with hummus make. All right, I am going to be using my food processor. Now, I have also very successfully made my hummus in a blender. And before I had a really good blender, I tried other things and it probably will not turn out as well. You can mash with a fork, but you're not going to get as good as results. So I'm going to suggest that if you're going to do hummus, to at least have some kind of a blender. If you have a food processor, I, I really have enjoyed this since I've had it. I've only had mine for about a year. I did everything with a blender. So I'm learning just like you. In my food processor, I'm using this particular blade. And I'm going to put in approximately three cups, which is equivalent of about two cans of the garbanzo beans. This is two cups in this container. I'm going to add one more cup. And again, you know, everything is the way that you like it. There is really no right and wrong when you come to cooking. So, for me, I'm always a little bit amused when I read recipes and they want, you know, a little tiny bit of this and a little tiny bit of that. Well, you know, yes and no, <laughs> depending upon. And I'm going to put in about a half a cup of the liquid that's in here as well. Just because that's what I feel like doing today. Now, I've already gone ahead because, again, we like onion and garlic. I have in here chopped up two onions and two heads, not cloves, two heads of garlic because we like it. We like a lot of garlic and I have sauteed these in advance in some oil to soften them. You don't have to do that. You can put them in whole, you can put them in raw, but you are going to have a much more pungent hummus. This is a little bit more mild, it will blend the flavors a little bit better. So that's why I went ahead and did this. So this is also going in my pot. And also, now generally, I've always bought my tahini from Living Tree Community. And when I looked in my refrigerator, there looked like there was a lot of tahini. I didn't bother to open the jar, and I only had a good size tablespoon, not even, which I like to put that in there. So I got brave, and I had in my freezer some whole sesame seeds. And they're all actually not too expensive and very nutritious. And I have a nut grinder. And I put them in, and I. this is what my result was. So I kind of made my own tahini. I was really happy with myself this morning. So if you're out of tahini, you can't find it, you have a nut grinder, or you could try a blender. I haven't done that. Or if you have a good processor, you might be able to do it there. So I'm going to put that in. And again, the tahini, it just depends on what flavors you like. Uh, from there, I also uh, have some oil in the garlic, but I'm going to put in a couple of tablespoons of oil anyway because that's going to make it nice and smooth. And lemon juice. Now you can either do your own lemon or I have a jar of lemon. It's organic pure lemon juice and I'm going to put in somewhere around a quarter of a cup because I like the tartness in there. So you can try that. And I also, again, like it spicy, so I'm going to throw in some red pepper flakes. Now, if you have roasted red pepper, you can also put that in there. That will make it a little pungent. Um, some salt, and my sea salt. Maybe around a quarter of a teaspoon, not a whole lot, and some pepper, about a half a teaspoon. And we're going to mix it up and see what we get. I don't know any more than you until the food processor stops, and then I decide what I want to add or don't. Want to add it? All right, let's check it and see. I always unplug first, so I don't want to lose any fingers or toes. Okay, it looks nice. Hmm, it's delicious. But I want a little bit more pungent. I'm gonna put a little bit more lemon juice in. And I'm going to put a little bit more tahini in, which I'm going to have to make. So I'm going to open this up and pour some in. I'm going to guess somewhere around a third to a half a cup. Put that on. It's 
going to be noisy, but take it just a second. and all. But that's going to give it a different, that Middle Eastern flavor that so many of you like. It's different than what we have here. They use tahini in a lot of different things in their desserts, in their sauces. It's another thing that you can do with hummus. You can thin it down with either a little lemon juice, sometimes a little oil, a little vinegar, and you can make a really nice um, salad dressing or dressing for your cooked vegetables. So whatever you have, continue to stretch your imagination because how many different ways can you make it work for you? How many different ways can you eat it in a way that's like your mental food? You know you know what's going on in your life. What's the mind pattern that you've got going? Which one do you like and how can you use it? How can you make that mind pattern work for you? Let's see how this turns out. Oh, I want a little bit more salt. I think it's spicy enough. It needs a little more salt. Take a look and see how it's doing. Smoothing out really nice. Looks beautiful. Now when this this is still warm, remember my beans were warm. So when it sets up, it is actually going to get a little bit thicker than this. Oh, much better. Yeah, this is good now. Alright, you can eat it on crackers, you can eat it on bread. Again, you can use it as a sauce on your cooked vegetables. You can have your crudités, your um, radishes, uh, kohlrabi, turnips, anything that you would eat raw, zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, you can use that as a dip. So it makes it really nice for your New Year's party. It makes it nice for you to have a snack on. It's easy to take to work. It's easy to snack on. If you have nothing in your refrigerator and you think, what am I going to do? A late night snack. It's easy to digest. It's excellent for you. It's good and healthy. So. Anyway, I want to thank you. Oh, well, let's check the quinoa before you go. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's coming along nice. I think it still needs just a hair more water. Oh, no, it's perfect, actually. That's just the shells, if you look on there, that have come off in the water. But it's nice and light and fluffy. Again, this is very healthy and nutritious. This is the white, again, quinoa versus we have the red and the black, which I showed you earlier. So you have lots of choices and things to do, but it's fun to try things different that are new and different for you. Remember, we're going into 2012. It is a new year. It is a year of healing. 2 plus 1 plus 2 represents healing. It's a 5. So you want to be sure and do things differently. You cannot keep doing the same things and getting different results. You must do it differently. I'm really excited about the the December's Daily Discard blog because I don't think the garbage man is excited because I have so much garbage that has come out of my house. As I told you, it is amazing what gets stuffed in the corners, which means it's stuffed in the corners of your mind and it's holding you back. It's stagnating you. You want to move forward. In January, we're going to look at combining new and different things and different techniques and all kinds of interesting things. So I hope you have at minimum your Violet membership. That's only $7 a month. And for that $7 a month, the amount of information we give you is absolutely astounding. And the more of you that purchase memberships, the more we can continue to offer for you because now we have our time to pull everything together in a way that makes more sense for people and we can devote more time that way. So anyway, I'm excited about all the changes. Expansions.com is going to continue to expand in 2012. It is healing. 
it has its own frequency it directs and reaches you on the level that you need in your mind pattern and please share expansions.com share the cooking podcast share Stuart's podcast share the Facebook post share the e-newsletter share what you can because let's get the word out there hyperspace oversold techniques you don't have to abandon what you're already doing but add to what you're doing take from the pot just like when we do our cooking take from the pot what makes sense to you add it into whatever you're already doing use it as an ingredient use it as a side dish a main dish a dessert whatever works expansions.com um, that's my life you know it's been my life for many many years for decades so I love what I do I'm grateful for you for being out there and supporting us and I appreciate your support in my December's daily blog and I look forward to supporting you in January of 2012 and beyond and I thank you for all that you do. Take care. Janet Diane Moria Swordlow, Expansions.com.